good morning students uh, today we are starting new topic of our chapter biomolecules and that new topic is enzymes so we are going to discuss about enzymes what actually these enzymes are these enzymes are biological catalysts means these are going to function as a catalyst in living organisms in living systems and what these catalysts are going to do they are going to speed up a biochemical reaction that is taking place in living organisms without getting used up in these chemical reactions so only rate of reaction is going to be increased with the help of enzymes structure wise these enzymes are going to have a three dimensional structure three dimensional structure means they are either going to have a tertiary structure or they are going to have a quaternary structure so these are always made up of proteins globular proteins that are having a secondary and tertiary ter tertiary and quaternary structure now other than this enzymes proteinaceous enzymes some of the rnas are also there which are functioning as enzymes and such type of rna are known as ribozymes so what actually these ribozymes are these are those rna species which are functioning as enzymes for example hammerhead ribozyme now if we talk about the structure of enzyme then always remember these are proteinaceous made up of different amino acids so these amino acids are going to arrange themselves in a specific orientation and the specific orientation is like this that some of the amino acids they are going to make a pocket like structure this is how a specific structure a pocket like structure is going to be formed and this pocket like structure is known as active site which is going to bind with a substrate so active site is that part that region of the enzyme that is going to bind with substrate substrate means the reactant with which the enzyme is going to bind up and it is going to convert into a specific protein or it is going to bind with cofactors and prosthetic groups we are going to discuss what these cofactors and prosthetic groups are so enzymes is basically having two parts protein part and non protein part so protein part is going to make the active site along with the non protein part and these non protein parts are going to be the cofactors and prosthetic groups now this active site that is all less than 5% of the total enzyme so the rest of the part of the enzyme is maintaining the structural stability of the enzyme and this 5 less than 5% part is responsible for interacting with a particular substrate and this active site has a specific shape because it is going to be complementary to the substrate that is going to bind with the enzyme so that specific shape is being maintained by specific amino acids which are going to be present in that particular active site region now a change in the shape of protein if a because of increase in temperature or if we are changing the ph so because of any reason if the enzyme structure is going to change that simply means that there is change in the active site of the enzyme say this was the initial situation initial shape and now we have changed the active site so now this active site is no longer going to bind with this particular substrate so whenever the shape of the active site is going to be changed then the functioning of the enzyme is going to be affected this active site that is made up of two parts one is the binding site binding site means it is going to choose a particular substrate depending upon the conformation that the conformation of active site and conformation of substrate is going to be similar and they are going to fix inside each other so if this is the substrate and this is the uh, this is the enzyme active site and this is the substrate so they are going to fit inside each other and this binding site that binding site is also having a catalytic site this catalytic site is responsible for a proper type of bond formation between enzyme and substrate and that is having a catalytic action that simply means here a substrate is going to be converted into a product now let's talk about cofactors i already told you that enzymes they are having two parts 
they are having proteins and non protein parts so what these cofactors are these cofactors are actually the non protein molecules that are associated with the protein molecules so they are going to help or they are going to assist the functioning of enzymes so these cofactors they are of two types they can be made up of organic cofactors or inorganic cofactors when we talk about organic cofactors that are associated with the enzymes these are known as coenzymes so coenzymes are organic cofactors which are going to be associated with the enzymes now let's see the inorganic cofactors what these inorganic cofactors are they are required for proper activity of enzymes i already told you then these non protein parts are required by the enzymes for their proper functioning like carbonic anhydrase that is a enzyme and it is going to require zinc ions for its activity hexokinase that is also going to require magnesium ions so there are lots of enzymes which are dependent on various ions for their functioning if these ions are going to be deficient functioning of or proper action of enzyme is not going to take place then we are having organic cofactors again they are required for the proper functioning of enzymes like glycogen phosphorylase is there this glycogen phosphorylase requires a small organic molecule that is pyridoxal phosphate for its functioning so it is going to function in the presence of pyridoxal phosphate only if that is not present again the functioning is going to be affected now that organic cofactors they are divided into two categories prosthetic group and coenzyme that simply depends upon how strongly these cofactors are going to bind with the enzymes we are calling prosthetic groups these are those co organic cofactors which are going to be tightly bound with the enzymes means separation of the prosthetic groups from enzyme is not very easy they are tightly bound like we are having flavins heme groups biotin if we see this heme group then chloroplast myoglobin hemoglobin these are going to have this heme group and if we want to take this heme group out of the enzyme then it is going to distort the complete structure of enzyme that's why it is known as prosthetic group the second one is coenzyme these are going to be again the cofactors organic cofactors but these are loosely bound with the enzyme like nad plus fad plus fmn so these are loosely bound with the enzyme so simply depending upon how strongly or loosely the organic cofactors are going to be bound with the enzymes we are differentiating them as prosthetic group and coenzymes now if we see a enzyme a protein part without a non protein part that is known as apoenzyme that simply means that our proteins they are made up of two things one is apoenzyme and this apoenzyme is going to be our protein part and second is the non protein part that is our cofactor so apoenzyme plus cofactor they are combinedly making holo enzyme so agar hum protein se enzyme se proteinaceous enzyme se cofactor ko remove kar dete hain then we are left with apoenzyme and if apoenzyme is associated with cofactor then it is going to form a holo enzyme a complete enzyme that is a fully functional enzyme now what substrates are substrates are going to be those reactants which are involved in a biochemical reaction simply for which the enzyme is going to bind and this enzyme is going to convert this substrate into a product now always remember that enzyme is going to be very much specific for its substrate what it simply means it simply means that enzyme it is going to bind with one substrate but that doesn't mean that this enzyme is going to catalyze a another substrate also for example if i am taking a very simple enzyme which we talked about in digestive system amylase so amylase is going to breakdown or it is going to be responsible for the breakdown of carbohydrates 
other than this if some other substrate is going to be present then this amylase is not going to function so it is very much specific for its substrate so substrate is going to bind with enzyme and there is a enzyme substrate complex that is formed so each and every enzyme has specific binding site for a specific substrate and when this enzyme is going to bind with the substrate uh, enzyme substrate complex is going to be formed so this is a substrate that is having a binding site at this particular enzyme and there is result of enzyme substrate complex now where these enzymes are going to be synthesized from the very starting we are saying that these enzymes are proteins proteinaceous in nature that means proteins are going to be synthesized on ribosomes so enzymes are also going to be synthesized on ribosomes which are attached on the surface of rough endoplasmic reticulum and where the information for a particular enzyme is present of course it is going to be present on our dna strand so each and every enzyme the information for each and every enzyme is present in a coded form in our dna and this dna is responsible for the formation for the translation of a specific enzyme now one thing always remember that not all the enzymes they are not going to be present in the cell all the time whenever these enzymes are going to be required dna is going to be giving information for its translation and when there is no requirement of such enzyme then translation is not going to be happening so enzymes proteins are there so these enzymes are again formed by binding of amino acids with peptide bonds again these peptide bonds are going to be formed these amino acid chain of amino acid are going to acquire a primary structure initially then they are going to show secondary structure tertiary and quaternary structure and finally they are going to form a globular protein that can act as a enzyme now enzymes can be of two types intracellular and extracellular as the name suggest where these enzymes are going to function so depending upon that we are dividing them intracellular simply means that these uh, enzymes they are going to be synthesized and they are going to be used inside the cell so that is the meaning of the word intra like the enzymes that are present in cytoplasm nucleus mitochondria chloroplast they are going to be synthesized there and they are going to function there we are having lots of enzyme like this oxidoreductases oxidoreductases simply means enzymes which are involved in oxidation reduction reacts reactions or we can simply say in redox reactions so those are intracellular enzymes or intracellular enzymes which are involved in the reduction in mitochondria extracellular simply means that these enzymes they are getting synthesized in the cells but these can be taken out or they are secreted outside the cell like we are having various digestive enzymes the pancreatic cells pancreatic acne the exocrine part of pancreas they are going to release enzymes pancreatic juice is having various enzymes and these cells are going to release them outside in the digestive system so that digestion of food can occur so they are going to they are going to be released by the pancreatic cells but they are finally going to function in the digestive tract so they are functioning outside the cell they are being released outside the cell that's why they are known as extracellular enzymes now what are the characteristics of enzymes that is important one enzyme the they are going to speed up a chemical reaction by lowering the activation energy of the reaction this activation energy is going to be the energy that is required to start up a particular reaction say if we graphically show so without use of a enzyme this much activation energy is required to start a particular reaction then what is the role of enzymes if enzyme is being used in a chemical reaction this is the activation energy that is going to be used so there is this much difference that is coming in the activation energy so simply reaction is going to speed up because activation energy is going to be lowered down by the enzymes 
Now their presence does not affect the nature and properties of end product. That simply means if we are having a reaction that is without use of enzyme, then also the same type of end product is going to form. And when we are using an enzyme in a chemical reaction, then also same end product is going to form. The characteristic of products are not going to change. What is going to change is without an enzyme, a reaction is either not starting up or it is taking long time. But when we are using an enzyme, very less time is being used. So this is the only difference. These enzymes are going to be highly specific in their action. That means they are going to act upon one kind of substrate only. If we are providing some other kind of substrate, then enzymes are not going to function. So they are very much specific in their functioning. And these are required in very minute, very small amount of enzyme is sufficient to speed up a biochemical reaction. Now these enzymes are very sensitive to pH, temperature, substrate concentration. So if, if see our digestive juices, say we are talking about uh, the gastric juices that are present in our stomach, they are going to work in acidic pH. The pH is almost say we can say 1.5 to 2 pH at which they are going to function. Now if pH is going to change, we are providing them alkaline pH, then the gastric enzymes that are present in gastric juices, they are not going to function at alkaline pH. So pH is affecting the functioning of enzymes just like that temperature. These are going to function at specific temperature and plus these are helping the organisms also to survive at favorable conditions because whenever the temperature is going to change, enzyme activity is going to be affected. Substrate concentration also. More the substrate concentration, more will be the functioning of enzymes. Means more substrate is going to be converted into product. But that to a specific extent. Reason, when all the enzymes are going to be binded with substrate, that means 100% enzyme substrate complex is going to be formed. And further when we are going to increase the substrate concentration, that is not going to accelerate the rate of reaction. So yes, substrate concentration we will see in Michaelis mental equation also how this is happening. So substrate concentration is going to increase the rate of reaction but to a specific extent. When 100% enzyme saturation is going to happen, after that when we are increasing the substrate concentration, then there is no increase in the rate of reaction. Turnover number. Turnover number is basically showing the efficiency of an enzyme. Efficiency of an enzyme means that enzyme, one enzyme molecule is responsible for the conversion of how many substrate molecules into product. If we see in one minute, a enzyme is converting say 200 molecules of substrate into product. That is going to be the turnover number of the enzyme. So, more the turnover number of enzyme, more will be the efficiency of the enzyme. Nomenclature. Nomenclature simply means naming. What different names are given to the enzymes? So naming is on the basis of different characteristics. Like we are going to give the name to a enzyme on the basis of substrate on which they are going to act. And we are using a suffix "-ase". See, here written maltose. So the enzyme that is going to be responsible for the hydrolysis. A water molecule is being added. So this is a hydrolysis reaction. So enzyme that is responsible for the hydrolysis of maltose that is going to act on maltose is known as maltase. This O's word has been O-S-E is removed and A-S-E is going to be added. So on the basis of substrate nomenclature is given. Say if we see some other example, if I am talking about cellulose, then the enzyme that is going to act on cellulose is cellulase. So O-S-E is being removed and this A-S-E is going to be added over here. So this is how we are going to 
name them on the basis of substrate they are going to act this is one type of nomenclature that is given like example is substrate is lactose then the enzyme responsible is lactase for maltose it is maltase for cellulose it is cellulase lipid lipase starch amylase protein protease so this is depending upon the substrate they are acting upon now according to international enzyme commission we are categorizing classifying enzymes into seven uh, sorry six major classes that is depending upon the type of reactions they are going to catalyze so which enzyme is involved in which particular reaction on the basis of that we are having six different type of enzymes these are our six different type of enzymes the first one are going to be oxido reductases the word simply means reduction oxidation so these are the enzymes which are involved in oxidation reduction reactions for example lactase dehydrogenase means when one particular compound is going to be reduced the second one is going to be oxidized transferases transferases simply means transfer of functional group a compound is from a compound a functional group is transferred on another compound that is simply moving a chemical group from one compound to another compound that is transferases such reactions are preceded by transferases for example hexokinases are there the third one are hydrolases hydrolases means simply they are going to add up a water molecule and they are responsible for the breakdown of a particular compound like we see maltose maltase is going to add a water molecule and it is responsible for breakdown of this maltose into glucose and glucose so such type of reactions are done by hydrolases like lysozymes what these lysozymes are going to do they are going to add up a water molecule and they are responsible for the catabolism of a particular compound then we are fourth one we are having lyases what these lyases are going to do lyases are basically responsible again for the cleavage or breakdown of a compound but here water molecule is not added that is the difference between hydrolases and lyases ye bhi breakdown mein involved hai lekin water molecule ke without involved hai like fumarase is there then we are having isomerases jo isomers banane ke liye responsible hote hain from glucose 6 phosphate fructose 6 phosphate is going to be formed so that is a isomerization reaction that is done by a enzyme isomerase just like that ligases are present ligases simply means which are responsible for joining so here there are formation of new bonds covalent bonds just like we see that rna polymerase is going to do that is going to make rna strand on a dna template by joining lots of ribonucleotides so these are the different types of enzymes classification of enzymes that is on the basis of type of reactions these enzymes are going to catalyze so that's all for today next time we are going to discuss some th- some things more about